The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 35. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of courageous women finding their inner journey to self-confidence five days a week. Want to learn how you can change your inner beliefs and attitudes? Download a free copy of the ebook by visiting the Tao of Self-Confidence.com. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who've discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yapchan, and today's guest, you know, she's a special one. You know, I met her about a year ago in Charlotte. We were roommates for an event that we usually go to, and, you know, she's she's been a constant, you know, inspiration in my own life, you know, just seeing her, being able to live the life that she wanted, you know, she, being able to be there for her children. She is a mommypreneur, teaching other moms out there how to build a business through the internet. And, you know, I just, I just love her. She's, she's just, she is just the best, right? I mean, every time we (laughs) see each other, we always have a fun time. We always, you know, connect with each other. We always talk about our dreams or visions because when you surround yourself with like-minded people, you know, we just have a big heart for supporting women in every single way, right? And without further ado, I just want you to, I just want to introduce you to Sarita Cleese. Sarita, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more with a guest. (laughs) Well, thank you, first of all, uh, Sheena, for having me. I'm just, yeah, thrilled to be here, and I just love what you do. And, you know, we, we do very much share the same vision of empowering women and giving women a voice. So I'm super excited to be here today. So thank you for having me. I'm just really glad you took the time to do this. It's going to be an awesome episode for sure. So, Sarita, what is your cultural background? Sure. Um, I'm actually, um, I'm German. Uh, I grew up in Germany the first 20 years of my life. I lived in Germany, but I'm actually a quarter um, Yugoslav as well, which I'm very, very proud of, my Slavic roots. And then when I was 20, I moved to Australia. So I'm actually living currently in Perth, Western Australia. So I've been here like 15 years now. So I'm almost Aussie. (laughs) But yeah, um, my background is I'm I'm three quarters German, one quarter Yugoslav, so... Thanks for sharing that. And what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? I've got actually, I love quotes, to be honest. And that's one of the things, it's so funny because um, my, a little little bit of a story uh, about quotes because I was always really into quotes. And I would, since I was actually 16 or 17, my first place that I lived in when I moved out from my parents was uh, this 12 square meter uh, student home for women. And um I would like um, cut out quotes and put them all over my bedroom. (laughs) And now these days on the internet, everyone's sharing quotes all the time. It's just so funny. So I've got so many quotes that I love. Um, I guess one is, uh, life is not measured by the moments of breath that we take, but by the moments that take our breath away. So I'm very much into, you know, really worshipping or not worshipping, but, you know, carpe diem, like seizing the day and, and because we never know how many days we've got. And that's why I think part of the reason I work, I'm working online is because I don't know how many days I've got with my children. So I want to make the most of it, you know. So that's one. Another one is we're all in the gutter, but some of us are looking at the stars. I think um, that's by Oscar Wilde. Because I truly believe that, you know, we all go through, through struggles. Uh, everyone has their own struggles. Um but, you know, if you look at the, the good in everything, you know, you can look at the good or you, the bad, you know, the half, half uh, class half full or half uh, class half, half empty it makes a huge difference. You know, your attitude is everything. And another one, just let me give me one more. Um, I guess the one by Marianne Williamson is a, is a huge one. The one, um, the, it's a lot, um, right, with your fears and it's a, yeah, yeah, and yeah, then it yeah, makes no, serving, no. Uh, playing small, it doesn't serve the world. And, and that's which, right, shining yeah. your light. And I think that's, I think that's my favorite one. I um, I put it as my say just like a few times on my Facebook. I think people get sick of it because they've seen it so many times. But I just love that quote because it's truly about um, you know, we're all, you know, we're all uh, meta and uh, by. By by shining our own light, we give others the permission to shine theirs. And um, instead of, you know, like even in Germany, you're talking cultural backgrounds. And one of the things, because we have such a bad history being Germans, honestly, we do. So it's not been easy being German (laughs) 
when when you go to places uh, like people make jokes and they say they think it's funny and they say things like Heil Hitler and it's awful because we feel really guilty like as Germans about what's happened and it's not even something that we have done it's something that's been done by our grandparents or whatever but we still there's a lot of guilt so we can kind of been taught not to stand out not to be a leader and if you want to stand out and be at the top or it's something you shouldn't be doing that because it's wrong you know because of the, the that background we have so kind of it's okay to play small but you know don't don't try to be a leader or whatever because we have that bad history you know and it's just it's not right because you can be an inspiring leader you can inspire women or anyone to you know we can get people together and we can do great things and make a difference but if you play small all the time you can't make a difference so that's the background i come from and i yeah i come from a cultural background of a lot of guilt that's not been dealt with and that's one of the reasons i left germany because i didn't like how everything was kind of swept under the carpet because people don't want to deal with it which is fair enough however um it's still there <laughs> and uh, it's not helping anyone to play small, you know? So I, I love that, you know, I, I want to, you know, part of my reason, part of my vision is to empower women all around the world. And it's okay to be, you know, be a woman. It's okay to be having fun and shining your light and inspiring people. Um, and you don't have to feel ashamed about it. You know, <laughs> like I think lots of women, like I, it took me a long time to, I mean, I still struggle with it, to be honest, but it's like, it's okay to shine my own light because that inspires other people, you know, to do the same. And we all have our own special gifts. And I truly believe that everyone got a very special gift. And we all, that's why I love connecting with people like Sheena, uh, because, you know, she, we, she has a different gift to me and I've got a different gift to her and and that's the beauty you know we're all so different and we all got different things to share with the world so yeah so I'm really honored to be here <laughs> awesome thanks for sharing that and I love how you brought up about your culture because you know a lot of mm. us we get we get um we get teased by the cultures that we're in right I mean I'm Chinese you know <laughs> I've heard every single Chinese joke but not a lot of people realize those jokes can really hurt people like for me mm. you know I, I'm over it but there's people out there that really stings, right? Especially when it comes to culture. So it's really, you know, we, sh we should stop. We really should stop doing that as a whole and just learn mm. to just get along, you know, because we're not our past, right? We're not, no. you know, it's not your fault those things happen. It happened and it's over with and we have to start moving on. So I'm really glad you brought that up. Yeah, and because I think it's actually a big thing because um, I talked at one of the events to a few of our friends, like Paulina and Ingo, you know them, and we talked about all that because we all come from these different backgrounds and, you know, World War II was a huge thing and many people, you know, lost their family members and lives and it is, you know, it is unfortunately, we still have that past, past on pain. You know, it's good that we start talking about this because it's still affecting us, like, you know, people say when, when they meet me, are you German? And they think it's really cool. And I'm like, I've never felt proud of being German. I've never felt proud about it because there is so much guilt about it, you know, because the first time I like, I watched um, the movie Schindler's List, I was, I was, I think 14. And because uh, in history class, we kind of skipped all that part because my, our history teacher stopped talking about it and we, we started talking about football because it's too painful, right? No one wants to talk about it. So when I really realized what happened, I think I was 14 and I watched the movie Schindler's List. I was like crying throughout the whole movie. I was like, oh my God. But I, I know it, I never did it and I never was a part of it, but it's still like it broke my heart and I was 14. And we we do carry that as a culture, but it's not us, but it still affects us, you know, and it's that con it's gener genera generational pain and stuff that even get passed on that's not yours. And I t totally believe in that, you know. It's just, I think, just even having that discussion, being able to talk about it can release all that, you know, and we can talk about it and can move forward. But in the past, like, people just never talked about it and it was just swept under the carpet. And I think it's just great that we can just talk about it and then can be released and can be, and then we can move forward, you know. 
Yeah, for sure. Totally. I love that we can just release it and then just, you know, have, have better things to come in. So, yeah. So, so Sarita, how would you dis- define self-confidence? I mean, I t- personally struggled and I, I, I think I still struggle with self-confidence. Um, I'm a bit of an introvert. Um, so for me, working online is awesome because I can hide behind my computer and I don't have to face a lot of people. Uh, self-confidence. I think it's just a beautiful thing to be able to be yourself. And um, the beautiful beautiful thing about working online is because you're attracting a lot of people to you that are just like yourself. So for me, that's what I love. I've connected with so many people now around the world that are just like myself and, you know, that are part of my team and whatever. And you don't have to be loud and you can be whoever you want to be and people are going to get drawn to you. And that's that's what I love about it. You know, I truly believe in abundance uh, and abundance for life for everybody. And I think if you just totally are true to yourself and to your heart, there will be people who are drawn to you. I just love the internet <laughs> because, you know, um doesn't matter what I post. You know, some people are going to like it. Some people are not going to like it. But I, what I love about it is that I can connect with people from all over the world and I don't have to be... I never have to bother anyone. Like I never bother my friends or family or anyone. Like people just come to me and and that's gave me confidence in myself, you know. Um, Yeah. But I think self-confidence, like personally, I think, yeah, it's, I'm trying, like I've got two children and my daughter, she's very self, she's got a lot of confidence right now, but she's at a really good school, you know. She's at a school where, she um it's a bit of an alternative school where it's very like self motivated learning and stuff and i'm really i really love that and she's super confident and because i think it doesn't matter how smart you are like my brother is super super smart but you know he he struggled with self confidence and that's why he didn't get the job that he wanted in the end and things like that and in the end of the day it doesn't matter how smart you are if you you don't have social skills if you feel like you're too scared to put your dream out there, you, you know, it, it can be a huge self-sabotage. So I think self-confidence is the most, it's one of the most important skills that you can give to your children or have for yourself because really it doesn't matter how smart you are. If you're too scared to put your idea or your invention or whatever it is, your passion out there, and no one's going to see it, you know. And there's always going to be the, the early worm gets the... What's it? First of all, the, 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 the early worm, worm gets the, the early, bird. the early, yeah, the early bird gets the worm, right? Yeah. So, and I've seen it actually many times with some of my friends who are really actually talented, and they never put their stuff out, and someone else is there before them, and they miss out because they hadn't had the confidence to put it out first, you know. And especially with working online, that's part of be the reason I've been successful is I just put it out there because my my reason my why was so big like if I wouldn't have been able to make this work I would have had to leave my children and had someone else look after my children so it wasn't about me anymore so it was easier for me to be confident about it because I was like oh, you know if I can't if I don't post this video right now if I don't finish my video challenge or whatever then maybe next month I have to look for a job and someone else will look after my children and I was not willing to do that so that helped me just do it um, even though I knew it wasn't perfect and the thing is the truth is that you know it's never going to be perfect ever (laughs) usually yeah the early bird gets the worm right so just do it and uh, people will actually like you more because they can relate to you because they can relate to someone who's not perfect you know if you look perfect and you've got everything is perfect no one can relate to you to the end anyway so it works in your favor not to be perfect that's what I've learned. <laughs> Thank you. I love that. And it's true. Action trumps everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, Sarita, what was your life like before, you know, your own discovery of self-confidence? To be honest, like I, when I was like 16, I guess most women and most, I guess, even guys when they're 15, 16, it's, it's difficult, you know. I had a lot of self-hatred. 
I hated my parents. I hated my dad. Now I've got compassion, you know. <laughs> But at that time, I I wasn't very happy. I wasn't happy with myself. wasn't happy with my parents. wasn't happy with my childhood. Self-development helped me a lot. So since I was 16, I started looking at, you know, reading and I started doing even like seeing psychologists and helping myself and I've been on that road ever since and I'm so grateful that I started very early because you know I even went to India and lived in an ashram for three months when I was in when I was like 20 and I um I did lots of crazy things but it really helped me just being okay with who I am and You know, all the different tools that I did, like self-development and different therapies that I did and EFT, you know, and there's certain things that you can do to help yourself to be okay with who you are because in the end of the day, nobody is perfect. And I truly, um, self-love is a huge thing for me um, that I focus on because you truly can't love or have compassion on it, or understanding, I believe, for anyone else if you don't have love and compassion for yourself. And I didn't have that when I was 16. I really didn't. I didn't have love for myself. I didn't have love for other people. I judged everybody. I hated everybody, including my parents. And I th think now I'm 35, I'm truly, I'm truly okay with who I am. I know I've got still a lot of things that I need to improve and work on and be a better person. But I love myself despite all those faults because I realize that nobody is perfect. And um, I think it, one of the major lessons for me was to, to say I'm going to be my own best friend. You know, you always look for best friends. You always look for people to save you or whatever. But in the end of the day, you only got yourself and – If you're your own best friend and see, listen to like, what would your own best friend say when you're in a really bad place? Yeah, make, you know, be friends with, with yourself because in the end of the day, we all have that inner child in us that needs love. And I totally believe that we have that little girl. I still got a little girl in me and I've got a male side, I've got a female side. And the more work you do on yourself, the more you realize all these things. And if you can make sure that you are okay, then you can also have truly meaningful relationships with other people and feel like you have, you can truly have compassion with people and know we're all on a journey together and it's not easy but it's it's worth it you know I, I highly recommend anyone to just like keep on doing self-development and you know like even for myself I I continuously work on myself. I continuously listen to the audiobooks. I continuously, I see like a counselor every two weeks. I see like a massage therapist, like a healer, sound healer every two weeks. I continuously make sure that I'm okay so I can be a better, so I can serve my people better, you know. I think especially when you start working online and like I've been quite successful, I need to make sure that, you know, I clear myself out enough to be able to be a, the best person to anyone that joins me. You know? So you've got to co continuously keep clearing yourself out because if you can't help yourself, how can you help others? You know. So I think you never stop learning. I will continuously be on that path of self-healing, self-transformation. I don't think it ever stops. And I think I'll still be doing this when I'm 80 or 90. I don't think you ever stop learning and growing and healing yourself, you know? It's that's I totally agree, you know. Self-development is a journey mm. that you take on forever, right? It's like once you do it, you can't mm. stop. It's kind of like showering, right? You're, you're not going to stop showering, right? You have to do it every single day if you want to smell good. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so Sarita, what's your life like now, you know, going through that personal development? I mean, how how is your life like right now, right this minute? Oh, I just moved to my own um, new place, which um, that's why I think there might be an echo because all the furniture are not there yet. So I moved to a different room because there was quite an echo. Yeah, so I'm living on my own uh, with my two babies, um, which I'm very excited about because You know, having that independence, knowing that I can totally self-provide, uh, working part-time online, it's, it's a dream come true. And also knowing that I travel, I travel a lot and I love traveling. Like that was one thing that I really missed before I started working online. Like, I've always been a traveler. I love traveling. And but once I had my kids, 
that kind of stopped because money was running out, you know. And since I started this this work online, I'm actually traveling every two to three months and I can text deduct it all. <laughs> and, and I love, I love, I love, I love traveling. So I love, uh, I travel, I get, you know, my kids are at school, which I love. Like they're at a the school where I can actually, today I had lunch with both my kids um, at school because I'm allowed to, they're like an alternative kind of school where it's an open policy for children or children and parents. I could be there all day if I want to. I can just come whenever I want to go. And it's the best next thing to homeschooling for me. So for me to have that freedom, especially because I work online, I can truly, like, I, I go there with my daughter. I stay ho- however long I want. Today I stayed for lunch with my boy and we're allowed to, you know. <laughs> and it's like I have the freedom to be there and really uh, be fully present in her, you know, life and education and just having that freedom I wouldn't have if I would have a normal job. So I just love that I'm, I'm, I'm actually get paid to travel these days because I'm speaking quite a bit too. Um, I get paid to travel. I can tax deduct everything I do that I love and I can be way more present, I guess, than I ever could be if I had a normal job in, in my children's life. So I'm, Super, super grateful that I started working online. Yeah. That's awesome. And, you know, I love just seeing pictures of you and your babies, you know, just you living your life out there and, you know, moving into your new place. Congratulations. And um, Thank you. <laughs> Sarita, if the listeners wanted to connect with you more or maybe, um, wanted to get to know you a little bit more, what you do, is there a website or any social media profiles you could we could connect with you with? Yeah, sure. Um. So, obviously, Facebook is huge. So, I've got my um, www.facebook.com forward slash Sarita D. Cleese. People can send me a Facebook message, but I do ha- get a lot of messages these days. So, uh, I think the quickest way to reach me would be uh, to email me, Sarita D. Cleese at Gmail. Sorry, let me just see. Sarita D. Cleese, yes. Sarita D. Cleese at Gmail.com um, would be actually easier because sometimes I just get so many new friend requests that I can't even I don't even see some people's messages which I really apologize about but so I think my um, email would be safer if you, people want to urgently contact me so it's seridadeklees at gmail.com and then I've also got my blog um, which is www.abundanceforlife.net so that's www.abundanceforlife.net They can learn a bit more about me. But yeah, I'm very, very active on Facebook pretty much every day. And then I've got my blog. And if people really want to urgently reach me, best to email me because I won't miss those messages because I seem to lose a lot of of messages in my other inbox on Facebook, which is, and I'm really grateful about. So, um, you know, I'm really excited that I've never had so much. I've never been successful ever in my life. <laughs> so I'm just learning how to handle it all but I just I just love that I can just be my be myself and a lot of people are yeah want want to work with me so that's really cool. Thank you so much. And to be honest Sarita with all the success you've had you're still the same down to earth person which I really love about you because you know you're still the Thank same you. and you know it's a, it's a great thing to be successful and be and be humble at the same time. So that's a quality. I think that's you know, not most people have when they're successful. Some of them, you know, the ego gets in the way. So I'm, I'm just really glad that you still do what you do. You do what you love. You preach the same things. And, you know, that's why so many people can can come to you, right? You get you attract these like-minded people because they see how genuine you are. And to the, to the listeners you. out there, if you want to connect more with Sarita, just head on over to the Tao of selfconfidence.com, search for Sarita's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else we talked about. And I really just want to thank Sarita for taking the time to share her story. So th- Sarita, thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Sheena. I'm so happy. To the listeners out there, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you for joining us on another episode of The Tao of Self-Confidence. Visit thetaoofselfconfidence.com for links to everything we chatted about today, as well as killer resources, gifts, and so much more. Subscribe to The Tao of Self-Confidence on iTunes or Stitcher to hear more stories of amazing women finding their inner journey to self-confidence.